what are the elements of cytoskeleton? The first one, the first class of, of cytoskeletal elements is our actin filaments. We call those microfilaments. Uh, actin filaments are known as microfilaments, and they are responsible for cellular contractions. They, for example, um, they can be involved in contracting the plasma membrane during cell divisions so as to pinch off to daughter cells. They can help cells crawl. There's a, an actin microfilament network underlying the plasma membrane, and the, me that membrane can be caused to ruffle. Uh, by virtue of changing the actin cytoskeletal elements. And um, as I've said, pinching of, of, of membrane off can, can occur because of the action of the actin microfilaments. Now microtubules are a second class of cytoskeleton and um, they are made out of polymerized tubulin. Alpha and beta tubulin proteins polymerize to form microtubules. Actin filaments, as the name implies, are simply polymers of the protein actin. Actin is a globular protein that can be polymerized into filaments. Microtubules arise when al alpha and beta tubulin proteins are polymerized, and microtubules form a larger cytoskeletal element than actin. Microtubule microtubules are hollow, and they have a larger diameter than actin filaments. And they provide organization to the cell and are, ver are very involved in moving materials. Uh, microtubules also form the spindle apparatus, which is responsible for separating chromosomes at mitosis, as we will see. And the third class of cytoskeletal fibers are the intermediate filaments, and there are a variety of intermediate filaments depending upon the protein that is being polymerized. So keratin, your hair, uh, for example, made out primarily out of keratin. Uh, keratin is an intermediate filament. And we've mentioned the intermediate filament of of lamin that underlies the nuclear envelope and is responsible for breaking down the nuclear envelope during mitosis. So that, that lamin protein, L-A-M-I-N, is an intermediate filament protein. And I showed you previously a meshwork, um, a scanning electron micrograph showing the meshwork of, of intermediate filament, um, of the intermediate filament lamin that is under the nuclear envelope. So schematically speaking, here is a microtubule. You can see it's a hollow tube. Here is an, is an actin filament, long fibers, smaller diameter than microtubules. And those actin filaments are called microfilaments. And then intermediate filaments are shown as a, a meshwork in the cell as well. And they, they can, those intermediate filaments can form cables that assume a variety of shapes. Schematically in space fill here are actin filaments and an actin filament a microfilament actually consists of two polymers of actin that are wound around each other in kind of a helical fashion. The microtubules, as you can see, are hollow tubes, large hollow tubes, containing massive amounts of the alpha and beta tubulin proteins that become polymerized. And intermediate filaments um, have an intermediate diameter between the two, as you can see, and uh, form fibrous structures. And de depending on what protein, the fiber structures can vary in their, in their diameters and their structures. Now, cell movement, uh, let's cover cell movement. Cell movement can take different forms. Crawling can be achieved via actin filaments, as well as the protein myosin. Um, when, you, when your muscle cells, when you contract, I don't know if you can see this here, when you contract a muscle, you have the protein myosin moving across actin filaments sliding actin filaments and uh, it causing muscle contraction. So myosin can interact with actin filaments and kind of move and slide those actin filaments relative to each other. I'll, I'll show you a, a movie of that in just a second. Um, flagella, of course, can contribute to cell movement as they do in prokaryotes. So in eukaryotes, flagella undulate to move a cell. And the flagella of eukaryotes has a very particular structure that we'll see. In addition to flagella, cilia also um, are, are projections from the cell surface. And they can be arranged in rows to propel a cell forward. So there are many cells, many eukaryotic cells have cilia on them that beat. And that beating um, can, can drive the cell forward, can move a cell. Many marine larvae, for example, have cilia 
coating their, their larval cells. And the, it's that beating that moves the larva through the marine environment. Now, both cilia and flagella are bounded by plasma membrane that has been extruded and extended. And um, both have this very similar microtubular structure consisting of, of microtubules, which are, as you know, polymers of the alpha and beta tubulin proteins. So let's look at that structure. Both cilia and flagella have a particular arrangement of microtubules. We call it the 9-2 structure, in which nine pairs of microtubules with the slightly different diameters surround a pair of central microtubules. And cilia are more numerous than flagella. Flagella are usually one or possibly two on, a partic on particular cells, whereas cilia can, be, can cook the entire surface of a eukaryotic cell in some cases. So here we are, we have our 9 plus 2 arrangement. <clears throat> this is an electron micrograph, and we see our nine pairs of microtubules. We call them the A and B microtubules because they differ slightly in their diameter, <coughs> surrounding a pair of central microtubules. Now you remember we said that the protein myosin can interact with actin microfilaments and, and grab those microfilaments and move along them or slide them. In the case of, of, um, of cilia or flagella, there is a protein called dynene, which, like myosin, is also a motor protein and is capable of grabbing adjacent pairs of microtubules and interacting with them, grabbing them, and sliding them along. And that, can, that sliding of microtubule, a lot of microtubule pairs relative to each other can drive a wagging of the flagellum. In this case, uh, this flagellum could, for example, exist in a sperm tail. This would be a classic picture of a sperm tail. And there are some variations on that whereby there are actually microtubule triplets without a central pair in, in some flagella. But this is the classic 9-2 arrangement of microtubules in a flagellum or a cilia. Now, when we get to extracellular structures, as part of the cell, we need to um, include the cell walls of plants, fungi, and some protists also have cell walls. And those cell walls can be made out of different compounds. Uh, we know that the cell walls of plants consist of the polymerized beta uh, glucose, in, and that, that polymerized molecule is called cellulose. It's the most abundant um, organic molecule on Earth because of all the cell walls that exist in plants. And in animals, the extracellular structures are, uh, we, we term an extracellular matrix, the ECM, the extracellular matrix. And the extracellular matrix is secreted by cells. And you often find complex extracellular matrices coding uh, cell epithelia. Epithe an epithelium is, a, is a, um, a row of cells that are tightly linked that form a, a barrier, usually. So your gut epithelium, for example, would be an example. And, 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 and um, epithelia have extensive extracellular matrices. So we're talking about cell walls now. They, we know that they are in fun, fungi, plants, and protists. And it depends what carbohydrate is present. So plant and protist cell walls use cellulose, as I've mentioned, which is a polymer of beta glucose, you'll remember. And fungal cell walls have the modified um, sugar polymerized into chitin. And chitin is also, interestingly, has been seized upon as a polymer that is used by the arthropods as their exoskeleton. So lobsters, insects uh, use chitin as their exo exoskeleton. Fungal cell walls are also made out of chitin. In the extracellular matrix of animal cells, we have a complex mixture of glycoproteins and fibrous proteins like collagen. There's another one called um, a fibrin, and um, it, the extracellular matrix can be contacted by the cell through integral membrane proteins that are embedded in the plasma membrane of cells that interact with the extracellular matrix. And those integral proteins can also interact with intracellular com uh, molecules so that communication can exist between the extracellular matrix and the cytoplasm. And here's a schematic of that. So we have a extracellular matrix that has collagen, elastin, and other fibrous 
protein that, uh, where monomers are polymerized into long cables. Um, and we also have examples of proteoglycans and glycoproteins, which are mixtures of, of, amino, of proteins or of, of peptides and sugars. Glyc, the suffix glyc implies sugar, proteo obviously implies protein. And here are some integral membrane proteins that interact and can bind to extracellular matrix components. These are the integrins, which have extracellular domains that have um, binding sites for extracellular matrix proteins, and intracellular domains that contact, for example, actin filaments inside the cell. And in this way, the integrin serves as a conduit for information in the extracellular matrix and the internal structure of a cell or the, uh, the, uh, the shape of the cell dictated by a complex actin network at the just underlying the plasma membrane. Now your uh, text actually has a nice table that compares prokaryotic animal and plant cells in various features in terms of their exterior structures and in terms of their interior structures. So I encourage you to consult your text uh, with respect to that, or you can just pause this movie here and, and look at this table for a few minutes. Now, I'll start the next segment of, of this lecture by showing you some uh, photographs, micrographs, and some movies that represent some of the cellular structures we've been talking about.